One of the things we need to do sometimes is take a step back from the painting, both physically and mentally a little bit, just to get a new perspective on the work. Painting is a battle of the edges. When shapes join each other, they create an edge, and that edge should be interesting in some way. So when I worked along this ridge line here, I paid close attention to how that edge interacted with the shape above it, which is a very light sky shape. So I wanted interesting tree shapes to project up into that. I also wanted them to be spontaneous and not too repetitious. I want repetition for unity, but I don't necessarily want that unity to be too boring or static. It's like in music, you want to have an uh, interesting rhythm rather than dot, dot, dot. You want dot, 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 something like that. So you want to have some unpredictability as well as uh, unity. When I work along these edges, you've seen me twist the brush, turn the brush, push the brush to get these kind of edges. Sometimes in the painting, I create just an irregular edge, and sometimes I'll have a crisp edge like this in the painting. You can see that continuing on through the piece in other places. As I spent some time critiquing this work, what I thought about was how this saddle ends up being too strong of a focal point. So this is where we don't want the eye to necessarily go first, where we have a strong light and a strong dark. That should go more in the focal area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the energy of this line after I start painting. How do we get the eye to the focal point? When I talk about direction, angles, I've talked about diagonals, verticals, horizontals. And I've used those to manipulate the eye and get the viewer to look in certain direction. So here we go. We follow this diagonal down here, and, and it comes down to these verticals, which pulls the eye down this way. The verticals here stop this diagonal from moving too far out of the picture plane. So what we end up with is the eye following along here, and we're corralled into this area. A common mistake sometimes is to make too much detail on the edge. So it's kind of like playing chess. If you play around on the edges with your chess pieces, you lose the battle. So what we want to do with a focal point is work in the core of the board and get the eye in here somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be right in the center, which could be also problematic when it comes to composition, but somewhere in the core of the painting we want interest to be held. Another thing that helps us with focal points is the color scheme. I've been using a lot of cool blues and grays, especially in the background, but I've also been introducing warm colors. And warm colors tend to attract and move forward in the picture plane, so they come toward you a little bit. And they also contrast nicely temperature-wise with the cool colors, so they become a really nice lush area in a painting, especially in the shadow. So here what I've done, I've used the warm colors to represent maybe native color of the rock where the blue colors represent the reflected color of the sky in the shadow. So I'm combining those two ideas there. Here with the trees, I'm using warm darks and keeping the values fairly close to some of the other portions of the painting so they don't stand out too much. But the warm colors that I do use here bring the subject closer to the front of the picture plane. So as we move down toward where there's more activity detail-wise, I'm using more of the warm color here. So the eye is naturally drawn not only with these directions, these diagonals that I have, but also the fact that I have these warm colors down here pulls the eye into this area. So all these things interact and work together. So it's not like I've thought about them as separate items, but um, as I've learned to paint, as I've gained experience, these things are internalized and they come out in ways I don't even expect or I don't even think about consciously, but they're just something that happens. And, and the more you gain experience in painting, that will happen. It, but as with anything, if you're still working with learning technique or learning how to handle a brush or things like that, of course it's going to be on a more conscious level and it's, it's just a little tougher. But as experience happens, these things just become part of the muscle memory. Mm -hmm.